Hey guys, welcome to Monster Prom with me, William, and my friend Abigail. Say hi. Hello. Hello. This is Abigail's first time on an official video. Well, she's been on. You've been on a stream before, haven't you? Two, you've been on two streams. Yeah, you've been on a few streams before. So she's insisted that I play Monster Prom with her, and I have no idea what this game is about. But apparently, it's really good. And apparently, it's voiced by YouTubers. So apparently, it's gonna be fun. Uh, voice interjections, yes or no? What? Wait. Make your own voices or awesome voice effects. Do you want to hear those YouTubers? Yes, of course I want to hear the YouTubers. Yay! Okay, how many of you are there? Uh, there are two of us, but are we only playing one no, player? No, it's two player. Two player? Yes. Do we, can we just both use the keyboard? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're just gonna do what I tell you to do. Short game or full game? Uh, you should do a full game. Full game, alright. Only 60 minutes? Ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Oh boy. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. How inspirational. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Ooh. Oh, who do I want to be? Uh, haha. -ha. I, like I like the fire of that one. Most people do. I like the fire. But this guy looks like he's cool. He's also a zombie, which is what I am. I'm gonna go with that guy. Dang it. Who are you really? Dang it. Did I make a bad choice already? Uh, no, that's who what? I wanted to be. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'll just I'll just be Brian because I'm unoriginal right now. Pronoun he, she, or they. I'll go with he. Uh. Uh. Okay. okay. Who do you want to be? I'll be the blue one. You'll be the blue one. All right. And what is your name? I can be Vicky. You can be Vicky. Yeah. And your pronoun? I'll go with she. <laughs> they. Sweet. Sweet. Okay. I have no idea if this was good or bad. We had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember clearly three weeks left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid who was cute, as cute as she was genocidal. Oh no. <laughs> Damien LeVay, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. <laughs> Liam DeLioncourt, 4XX, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Polly Geist, A, hey, I get it, a party <laughs> ghost with an insatiable hunger for the wrong things. And Verna Oberlin, Vera. a mean. Vera. Vera Oberlin, a mean self made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we had only three weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. I, I guess we're ready to start. Well, first we take a quiz. Oh god. Welcome to the stupidest pop quiz ever. Oh why. All minds are rotten, but they're rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose what kind of TV and sicko you are. <laughs> I like this game already. Yeah. The stupidest pop quiz ever will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into character stats. I forgot stats. the trademark. Oh, the trademark. TM. Sorry. Sorry about that. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's go! Okay, me first, I guess. Yes. Democracy is just broken. What would be the best way of choosing the leaders of modern society? Whoever can play the most heartbreaking violin solo wins. We create a reality show called America's Next Top President, where the candidates compete in all kinds of physical and mental challenges, but our turnout were increased, and we would turn a profit on it. Or you put the candidates in an empty room with a wild grizzly bear. Whoever kills the bear should be the president. If everyone dies, then the bear should be the president. Uh, what, what, what have I gotten into? <laughs> um, I mean, to be fair, uh, the presidential election is already a reality show. Yeah. Uh, and grizzly bear seems a bit gruesome. I like the idea of the artist being the president. Who plays the most heartbreaking violin soda? Okay, and you? Um... Let's go with the grizzly bear. You like the grizzly bear? Yeah. Bear is the president. So, so creative, so fun, so bold. So bold. You built a 100 foot statue commemorating an event so that a thousand years archaeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? That mind blowing twist in your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever, unlike all that boring stuff they <laughs> show on the news. Your least favorite political figure being devoured by a rapid rhinoceri, which are also covered in badass tattoos. Or that glorious instant when your friends stopped you from hella texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. No one has ever stopped me from texting embarrassing. I have yet to I have yet to do a drunk. Well, I did do one drunk text, and it was to a guy that said, "You're not drunk enough. You're speaking in complete sentences. Take another shot." Um, 
I only drunk Snapchat. Uh, what would I? I don't know. Um, I, uh, I don't like this one. I don't like that kind of politics. Uh, I have never really had that happen to me, so probably a pl plot twist from a TV show. Something represent Game of Thrones. So which? Oh, Game, Game yeah. of Thrones? Game of Thrones probably for I'm me. I'm gonna pick the same one. Same one? Yeah. So We're all so great. We're so creative. So creative. What's the sexiest type of knowledge a lover can have? Sports, how to make a killer cocktail, tale, how to set stuff on fire, 80s movie trivia, all the principles to build a financial empire, or lyrics to all the Disney songs. So do you want a spoiler here or no? Uh, no spoilers. Okay. No spoilers. Uh, sexiest type of knowledge. Uh, killer cocktail would be pretty cool, but Disney songs feels like it's what my childhood is calling to. I'm torn between... Being an alcoholic and being a child. Um. Cocktail. What are you thinking? See, I know what this question is asking, and this is actually which character you're gonna be going for. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So the first two were bullshit. No, those no. help your stats. Oh, okay. So you were really creative. Um, let's do Disney songs. Disney songs. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Cool. All right. Since the entirety of the game depends on one question. Well, I love it. no, you can still go for the other ones, but it's easier to get the ones um, that you pick from. Sure. Them. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So uh, here you get to pick a place to go to. Go to and the different things happen if you go over to the side of the screen. Oh. Yep. There, and it shows you which different stats you'll gain by going to that area. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, where would you recommend I go? Because I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well... I've already got lots of creativity. told me no spoilers. That's fair enough. Alright. So yours is the green one. Okay, so I probably top. want to boost my charm, because my creativity and my smarts are up there. More charm and more bold. Uh, I don't know which one represents what. I think the red... The red is bold. We got bold, we got creative, we've got... What, I think charm would be the kissy face, am I right? Yes. Charm would be the kissy face. Uh, boldness would be the tree in the background, that laughing face maybe? Mm, that's fun. That's fun? Oh, okay. Um, I see money, I Just see- Just pick. I don't know! Just pick. Okay, fine, I'll you go to the gym. You have so many days. Okay. That day was an epic- That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team spirit. Leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain two charm. Nice. You spot Liam and Polly talking about a party or something. Parties are cool, so you decide to join them. Look, if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. But inviting everyone to a party on Facebook is going to make it seem unbelievably lame. lame. Yeah, lame. <laughs> but if I don't make a monster Facebook invite, no one will know where to go or what time to get there. We'll get like six guests. But they'll be cool guests. A good party is about exclusivity. No way! A good party is about getting hammered with a bunch of people who won't remember what you did in the morning. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> Let's agree to disagree. Or, we can ask our friend here to resolve this for us. What do you think is the best way to invite people to a party? You hand three flyers with the party info, hide them in the bathrooms of the three coolest coffee houses. Whoever finds them first deserves to be at the party. Take a topless selfie and use Photoshop to cover your nipples with the party info. <laughs> Print that shit out. Plaster it over the school. People will come in more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, yes. Oh, dang it. Wow, oh. I can't even. You wanted to see my boobs, you could have just asked straight out. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Okay. Where am I even supposed to find a printer? This isn't the 90s. Why don't I just fax everyone the party invite? That seems like a good idea. Perv. There's a thin line between being bold and simply being an idiot. You lose two fun and one boldness. Dang it! So, dang. different choices depend on if they're gonna work depending on your stats. Fair so, enough. because your bold was low, it didn't work. Okay, okay. Whereas if someone who has a boldness of like 11, they might actually be able to do it. That's a good point. Okay, where do you want to go? Um, let's go. I want money. So, the li library? The library. Yeah. Oh, goodness. That just means you spend some of the time on the library's PCs sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. You monster. Yeah. Doesn't sound very nice. But who's the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? True. You lose 10 karma, which isn't a stat, so who cares? And you gain two money. <laughs> That's awful. You're a monster. 
out of the corner of your eye, you spot Scott and Miranda staring intently at a picture of a seahorse? <laughs> Looks like a killer seahorse, Miri. What are you so worried about? Well, you see, one of my daddy's subjects gave me this horse as a gift. Oh, you heard what they say, haven't you? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. What? What? Who are they? When did? They, why do they say that? What's in there? I don't know. That's why I'm so distraught. I'm terrified I'll accidentally look into this gift horse mouth and see... See what? A butt? A tinier horse? A world without sports? I don't know. I don't want to find out. Oh, come on. You gotta find out. You gotta find out for... What's that thing? Miss Fer Miss Feratu. Miss Feratu is always <laughs> talking about. Science? Yeah, for science. You gotta. You realize Scott's looking to you for your opinion. They both are. What should Miranda do? Don't you ever look that gift horse in the mouth. In fact, breed it with sea urchins to produce gift horses with tiny mouths. Or look that gift horse right in its damn mouth. They say not to because they don't want you finding all the delicious mouth candy. <laughs> I love this dialogue. I think I'll pick Look That Gift Horse. Look right That Gift Horse right in its damn mouth. Scott claps his hands with glee and drags Miranda off so they can look in her horse's mouth. The next day, you run in both of them, contentedly eating out of a wet paper bag. Hey, bro, want some mouth candy? Gross. <laughs> You're absolutely right about everything you said. This candy is marvelous. Try some. Please date me. <laughs> Hold something out to you. Doesn't look like candy. It looks like horse tonsils. You tell them you're not hungry, which they don't mind. More host tonsils for them. You gain two smarts and one boldness. Dang it! Ooh, they both liked me for that. Let's trade places. Everyone choose a brand. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Okay. No, before clicking, Will. Oh, don't okay. look. I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at. Don't look. I'm not looking. Okay, we both need to pick a brand. Okay, what what brand? Any brand. I uh okay, like like a, a store brand. What are we talking about? Any brand. Oh. I pick uh Nike. Well, I pick uh McDonald's. Okay. All right. Based on how funny and creative it would be in the selected brand teamed up with a popular K-pop group that starred in all their ads. Uh, Nike or... Nike McDonald's. versus McDonald's. Uh, I think that that might be cringe if McDonald's did it, but Nike's got it on the sports star, so it might just be out of place for Nike. So I don't know. Would it be crazier for Nike or McDonald's? I think it would be crazier for McDonald's. It would be cool. It would be okay, cool you can with go Nike. Alright, sweet. I'm gonna go first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll happen like every time. Oh, cool. Yeah. All but right, you have it's to noon. say it before you click. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, let's go. So now it's lunchtime, you can choose who you want to sit with. I'm going to sit with this guy because I'm apparently supposed to date, or this girl. It's a girl. Yeah. But you can start like trying to get other people's hearts if you don't want to go for her. Okay. Yeah. You find Vera and Polly at their table deep in conversation. All right, business idea. People pay a monthly subscription to prevent me from drugging their food. That's just insurance, that's the mafia. Business idea, people pay me a monthly subscription to put drugs in their food. <laughs> Price out the cafeteria's current food supplier by selling plastic food. Nipples! <laughs> Great business idea. Just nipples? Yeah! Uh, okay. Wait, 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 business idea. We use clever marketing and food science to create the perfect new diet craze and sell it for an insane profit. That's actually a good idea. Better than nipples? Yes. We need to figure out what the new diet product would be. Hmm. Tapeworms? Uh... Or, meth, it's what's for lunch. Ah, uh, ah, uh, they both seem bold. Uh, I mean, I guess I would be creative with this one. I don't, I don't know. I don't have much boldness. I have a lot of smarts. I think tapeworms would probably be better because we're monsters. Maybe. I'm gonna go with tapeworms. That has been quite pleasing. Nice. What a delicious idea. But what if about for, like, ghosts? Ghosts want to lose weight, too. We'll sell ghosts of tapeworms alongside living ones. Where are you gonna get tapeworm ghosts? Simple. I'll kill tapeworms with unfinished business. Which is like any tapeworm. They're very ambitious. Well, all of my objections to this plan are solved. Scam away! Soon, Vera's new slender friends are all the rage in the cafeteria, and she seems to tolerate your presence even more. And everyone's used losing weight! Hooray! Hooray! Alright, where do you want to sit? Ooh, I want to sit with the... Prince. Want to see with the prince? The he's the blue one. The blue in one. The corner. Oh dang, he looks he looks. He's hella. a special character. Special, I think. You're trying to enjoy a meal in peace when space untwists itself to reveal the interdimensional prince. Yes, my love. Yeah. Oh goodness, most glamorous hero! Thank the squid star I found you. I've been confounded by the most fiendish riddle, a riddle that has vexed me for days, weeks. The riddle of how to change the ringtone on my smartphone. This interface is more torturous than my palace labyrinth. 
for, for real? You grab the prince's phone change, change his ringtones to butts, 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 all about those butts by the booty bros. <laughs> My hero, what seems difficult to me is trivial to you. And you even guess which ringtone I desire, a true all-time classic from the sixth dimension. There's only way I can replay you, by bestowing upon you a superpower of your choice. I can do that. I'm the prince of another dimension. I can do all sorts of crazy things you don't know about. All kinds of crazy things besides use his phone. And apparently he only gives you two superpower options. Telepathy or an ass that will quit. I already have an ass that will quit. Hey, yo, so you going with telepathy? No. Oh? Yeah. You going with telepathy? No. No? Ass. Ass. You want the ass. ass. Okay, ass. Ah, yes, the tros of a true gentle monster. With a wave of his magic wang... God damn it. The prince <laughs> imbues your ass with boundless worth ethic. By day, your ass amazes your classmates and creepy teachers. By night, it does your homework for you. All that work makes your buns super tight. Four charm, hot damn. Ooh, now I'm just not fun. Okay, wait. Everyone chooses an occupation. Share your choice out loud. Okay, uh... Grave robber. Karate instructor. Mario and Luigi were plumbers. Play orders to decide on how funny an off-brand version of these two heroes called Hansa Rudolph would be, who aside from saving the kingdom are also blank. Oh, hmm. mine's better. Uh, wait, what was yours again? I Grave forgot. robbers. Grave robbers. <laughs> that would be pretty that would be pretty cool. Yeah, you win. You flat out win that I one. Win. Okay, it's the evening. Nice. These, this is a this is a late school. Yeah. Okay, where do we want to go? Apparently there's a special character in the gym. Yep. She is the shop. The uh what? Mine's showing up. Remember oh. I'm blue and you're green. Oh yes. She's the shop. She's the so where should where are we going? My fun needs to be increased, and I think fun is there, so let's do outdoors. All right. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. They have recess in high school? What the hell? Yeah. You have no idea how it escalates so many people, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain two fun. Nice. After you're counting and recounting your money, hoping to find an extra dollar, suddenly... Hey Vicky, Ooh. look! Look here! Look what I have! Isn't it shiny? Scott holds a roll of duct tape, which you can see it is indeed shiny. <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying we tie up Crazy Martin the Werebear Janitor. I'm just saying this tape is crazy strong. If you wanted to wreak some havoc on the school, Crazy Martin might be a little tied up. Thank the triple goddess we've oh, spent man. months tracking that. <laughs> our, our thing? It's so cool, right? We have a thing, and it's our thing, and it's the best thing, and it's ours. Oh god, you fools, that's the duct tape of retribution. It's only the only adhesive that can hold Balthazar the Destroyer, whom we must detain in order to save the world. Ah oh, well, saving the wor world is good. I just liked it because it was a cool shiny thing. You can have it. No, 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 wait, they're probably just making that shit up because they want to take the cool thing from us. Balthazar the Destroyer, obviously fake. Why have we never heard of him? We've had a three hour long lecture on Balthazar the Destroyer in homeroom yesterday. You're right, Damien. They must be lying. I think we would have remembered that. <laughs> it's the same with you. you were at a sports practice, and Damien was asleep. After we heard about the threat Balthazar posed, we took it upon ourselves to journey into the dungeons of Holus Ma to bring down the bring back the holy duct tape of retribution, only to discover it was already gone. Oh, the dungeon! That's where we were. We took a wrong turn on our way to English curses, and totally got lost. Somehow we were in like a maze. Anyway, we saw that sick tape and thought we might take it. And now it's fucking ours, and you can't have it! Ugh, can you be any more oblivious? Hand over the table, we'll be forced to use force to take it by force. Yikes, it's getting oh, out man. of control. It's a sticky situation. You better step in before someone or some duct tape gets hurt. Oh man. Ooh. Uh, don't worry, Damien, you can keep the duct tape for your nefarious purposes. Coven, why don't you use scotch tape of, hey, cut that out instead? Or, Scott, you don't really care about that duct tape, right? You just like having a cool shiny thing. But watch me use my sweet negotiation skills to get, wait, two shiny things. Oh man. Ooh. So I can either impress Damien or Scott. That's a good question. Um, I mean, you've been going for Scott. Or no, you, you, I was going for Miranda. Well, you were, but you did a good thing with Scott, so your odds are- But look at Damien. Damien's nice. Yeah. But look at all that chest hair on Scott. Yeah, that's... You can't say no to chest hair. Uh, I can. Oh, you can. And I will. Oh, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna try and, <laughs> yes. woo, you're gonna yes. woo the devil. Okay. Yes. The Scott Jacob, hey, cut that out. Now who's making things up? 
of all the ridiculous, stupid, far-fetched... Oh, you know what? This article says the Scotch shape of the head cut that out actually actually exists. It's three times as powerful. Who would have thought? Oh, man. I feel like in mundane situations, duct tape tends to be stronger than Scotch tape. But I guess everything goes out the window once magic gets involved. Normally, I wouldn't bother to go off for a quest of something when I can get an object that serves the same purpose by just hexing a few idiots. But we do make it a goal of ours to never cut corners, so if the scotch tape of hate cut it out is the best artifact to defeat Balthazar, let's track that down. So what just happened? Vicky absolutely 100% made up an magic artifact name that just so happened to be real, so now the coven is searching for that instead. So, do we get to keep the shiny thing? Yes, Scott, we get to keep the shiny thing. <laughs> Yay! Nice job, Vicky. I like how you lied to get what you wanted. That's hot. I think so hot. Damien caught you hot? Hooray indeed. Two smarts and one fun, as well as Scott and Damien's admiration and appreciation. Um, you are doing far better than I am. Uh, I need uh, to boost yeah. my I need to boost my fun, but I can't. Yeah, Dang I, it. I told okay, wait, boldness I, is what? It's uh, the bathrooms? The bathroom. Yeah. Alright, bathrooms I gotta boost I gotta boost my boldness. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. Mm -hmm. Amen. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. In the evening. You gave zero shits, but gave two, gave two boldness. Nice. You spot Vera and Polly discussing something. You gotta get in. It's bound to be something nasty. Hey, oh, you two again. Hey, 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 hey. What? Are you going to that party tonight at Dale the Mummy's Crypt? The Dark Star has a line with Venus or something, so his parents are beans of pure energy for the weekend. He's got the place to himself. I might stop by. Yay! Okay, so listen, Scott's gonna be there too, and I totally want to spike his drink. Not bad. Na now I'm interested. What are you thinking? Laxatives <gasps> or Viagra? <laughs> Viagra. Oh, God. Gross. I was thinking something fun, like shrooms. Mediocre. Shrooms won't even dissolve in the drink, you idiot. You there, back me up. What do you think we should put in his drink? <laughs> Make it something fun, like shrooms. Uh, moon root induces werewolf transitions. It'll be, I mean, a little literal party animal, but he's already a werewolf. Uh, well, uh, yeah, it would induce it. You want to make him a laughing stock? Use that flower that makes a person fall in love with the first thing they see. We can make him fall in love with a chair or a house plant. Ooh. So who's gonna impress who? Which one's gonna impress who? And who do you want to impress? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I mean, Polly, I got the I got the go-to, but the snake lady, I also uh, have points with. Yep. Hmm. Uh. Ooh, I don't know which one's more devious. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Literal party animal will probably impress uh, Ghost Lady. Uh, I kind of like the creativity of the second one, but I don't know what to pick. I don't know what to pick. I gotta make a decision. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna switch and boom. Oh dang it! What you don't know anything about animals? Come on! Dogs and cats always bark when ghosts and witches are around. We'll be able to shut them up all night. His constant discorded howling is totally gonna clash with the DJ's constant discordant howling. You like dogs so much, why don't you plan your own party at the kennel? Have some respect for the DJ in his very serious career. Dang nabbit! This is stupid, I hate this game. No, you don't. No, I don't. Something's happening to... Oh god. Oh, what's happening to me? Um, sure. Uh-oh. You're practicing your moves against the invisible ninjas who are totally real and totally after you when you spy a much more visible threat. Yo, fuck hammer! I need your advice about something. That's a creative insult. You know the most powerful force on earth? Yes. Stronger than animals or swords or my nine-packed abs? It's love. I think I'd just be my in it with your buddy Vicky. He's oh. in love with me. And sure, love is hardcore. But just because the feelings are so strong and that's badass, but the love will be doubly as strong if it turns out that Vicky is as hardcore as I think she is. And of course, there's one way to judge a person's true soul. You know her pretty well. Do you know what her inner murder weapon would be? Uh, of course you do. By which you mean, you're happily totally able to make it up on the spot. Now you decide Vicky's fate. Don't be a dick unless you want to, in which case totally go for it. Oh god. Major cardiovascular disease. <laughs> the ultimate murderer, the leading cause of death worldwide, and something capable of catching up to tough motherfuckers who have survived everything else. Or an electric chair. That's how boring she is. She'd be standard government regulated death. I think that that's cooler, and I'd like it. Okay. I think, he, I think he'd like that too. Damn! Oh, man. I wouldn't have even thought of that. If major cardiovascular diseases were a knife, they'd be the sharpest and deadliest knife ever. If they were a sword, they'd be sharpest. two katanas. If they were a gun, they'd be an atomic bomb. <laughs> oh my god. What? <laughs> wow, a cardiovascular disease was raging in Vicky this entire time and I never knew it? Oh man. Well, that's confusingly worded. But luckily, since you're the one who started this, you know Vicky isn't likely to die. 
Unless they're dying to go with the problem with Damien, in which case, bam, you're welcome, Vicky. And you gain three boldness. Nice. Nice. There you go. All right. Congratulations, you got a prom date. So that's Choose the first a celebrity. Week. Okay, uh, I've got mine. Uh, Chris Pratt. Britney Spears. Ooh. Decided based on how likely the celebrity celebrity is secretly to be related to Brian. Uh, related to me, because he comes from Lake Stevens. Chris Pratt. But you're not Brian. Uh, well, Brian. Okay, well, fine. I am Brian. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that's the first week. Okay, let's go for another week. I'm ready to go for we're another week. We're good on week. time? Yeah, we're good on time. Or good enough. Okay. I want to get to a uh, farther place. Okay, I still need more fun. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't have any. I don't know what to go, to go for. Uh, hmm. Well, your fun is ridiculously low. Yeah, so I probably need to go outdoors and have more fun. Or you could go to the shop. The, sh the shop would... The shop? Is at the auditorium today. Oh. And what could I do at the shop? You can buy things. I could buy things. So that would increase my creativity, which I already have a lot of, but... Eh, let's go to the shop. Let's buy some stuff. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats, shit that will lead you to stupid new adventures, and some shit that might be much needed at very specific moments. So take a look. Oh god, I have no money. Alright, uh... A tampon by a former prong queen for blood rituals, or in case you're just a creep with unhealthy obsessions. Don't even ask. Uh, literally just a white blanket with two eye holes. You don't have to be an idiot to mistake it for a ghost costume, but most of our classmates are idiots. A sexy fake Italian accent. Uh, the hottest thing is being yourself, but laxness access is close, to be honest. Uh, a Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal battles such as love and death. A fake badass tattoo. Uh, impractical yet kind of funny. That would probably boost my fun if I had to guess. And then a motivational poster. And then more things that I can't afford. A penguin ring. You want this, you sick pervert? I had no idea you appreciated a good old reverse Romanian Wilkinson. I must admit, it's kind of hot you're into that kinky shit. Or a corpse. Um. So different things can trigger, like, events for you, I and then other things just help your stats. Uh, I feel like impractical but kind of funny glasses will boost my fun. Or I'm guessing they will. Ya yeah, boy! I have no money. Who would have thought- who would want to spend money for their college fund when you could spend it on weird stuff that's, like, useless? That's the spirit! Let's go! Alright, goody goody. Alright, where do you want to go? What are you thinking? Let's go to the library again. To, to the library. I want more money. Nice. You spend some time on library PCs mining Bitcoin. It's supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency, but you guess no one actually has any fucking idea how that works. Not wrong. You gain two Bitcoins, which is equal to $22 million, which unfortunately is equal to two monster donors, so two money. Nice. Too money. You're distracted by your work by creative swearing from across the room. Ooh, give me good stuff. Sounds like Damien. No one else can curse quite so fluently. You greasy mound of possum tits. I hope that wasn't towards me. <laughs> you greasy mound of possum tits. Why don't you eat your keyboard and shit out of life, loser? Oh, he's talking to me. You can't help going over to investigate. Seems like he's playing that popular and extremely competitive online game, Federation of Fables. Judging by his swearing, he's not doing well. And judging by the laughter coming from the voice chat, doesn't look like his swearing is working. It looks like he's about to put his fist to the monitor. You gotta help him out. You play this game all the time. Reveal the most fucked up secrets. Or speak the forbidden name of the faceless goat god into the microphone, driving the imposing team mad. Ooh. Ooh. What one can I get away with? I mean, you're pretty... You got pretty good stats all around the board, so you probably can get away with both of them, if I had to guess. Yeah, well, I do play that game all the time. So. Fair enough. So, okay. Yeah. We're gonna go with that? Yep. Boom. You confidently pluck up the headset from Damien's head, stand behind him, and place your hands over the keyboard. It's like that scene in Ghost starring Patrick Swayze, but with video games instead of erotic poetry. You smash all the buttons with grace until your character turns himself into a tractor and runs over the enemy team. The match is basically won, but to show off, you release this character's ultimate technique, which is basically giving the leader of an opposing team AIDS in real life. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Whoa! Do you give that fucker AIDS? That's so much better than cursing. I had no idea this character was capable of all this. I should have suspected it, since his name is Osvaldo the Wear Tractor, Guardian of AIDS. Who the hell makes these games? Well, at least you romance the alien and got, yeah, and not the guy who got AIDS. You got two fun and one boldness. You are, like, doing phenomenally. 
Okay, choose a food. Okay, um... Sushi. A rotten chunk of cheese. A rotting chunk of cheese. Rotting, rotting cheese. Okay. How unappealing a pizza would be if the chosen food was at its topping. Boom. Rotten cheese or... A rotting cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yeah, I okay. get, I get it with rotting it. cheese. Yeah. All right. Week two, can I find sushi someone? Sushi on pizza would be interesting. Good, it would, would be. If you liked True. sushi. Too true. All right, um, who do I want to sit with? Ooh, that's the gym teacher. That, that the tiger? Yeah. Ooh. Um, I mean, those guys are pretty go-to, but... Hmm. These guys always seem to come in pairs. Uh, I'll go to the gym teacher then, because these two up there are just like... Or, I need, I need to romance something. Yeah, you I, do. I don't know what to do. Do I just cut my losses with these two? Because I'm doing real well, then bad. who are you going to ask to prom? I don't know who I'm going to ask to prom. Maybe I'll just go in the middle, because you've already got Damien. Uh, and these two I'm doing horribly with, so I'll just go in the middle. You find Liam artfully arranging his food while Miranda diligently sorts her silverware. Nothing that, neither of them is eating. Have you found it yet? I'm trying, Liam. But finding the perfect silverware for your cafeteria food pig is an art, not a science. How hard could it be? It's silverware. Just silverware? And I suppose the food in your food is just food? No, it's a metaphor for urban consumption in a post-post-post-modern industrialized mega-society. Obviously. Obviously. Well, my metaphor is, it's a metaphor for silverware. Yes, is that not enough? It's more than enough. But can we hurry it along? The lighting is perfect, and I don't want to lose it. You're a bit of a silverware aficionado yourself. Maybe you could speed up selection while simultaneously demonstrating your knowledge. Mm. Um, okay. Try the picture fork. It's a fork of taking pictures. Or nothing conveys elegance like a gloating spoon. Um... Hmm... The picture fork. It's a fork for taking pictures. Or elegance and taste like a spoon. Um... I'm gonna go with a spoon. Yeah, the gloating spoon! The most distinguished of utensils! What's a gloating spoon? Well, you wouldn't know about it. Rude. No, 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 I wasn't being rude. Rudeness is simply the way one must introduce the gloating spoon. Oh, oh, I didn't know. Well, of course you didn't. You're not as cultured as I am. Such smug superiority. I am no match for this spoon. Miranda produces the gloating spoon with much fanfare. It looks like a regular spoon, but then, what do you know, you peasant? He's blushing. I like it. Uh, after you convince Miranda to spend some time with you after lunch, lovingly explaining the spoon's finer points, even though spoons don't have points. Let's go. Nice. What a good point. Nah, good point, eh? <laughs> Alright, I'm assuming you want to go with Damien. Well, why not at this point? Yeah, let's go. You sit down to enjoy a nice, normal meal at the spooky high cafeteria, as usual. Lol, just in case something fucked up is always going on here, today's no, no different. Oh, hey, Vicky! You want to come sit with us and our imaginary friend? No one else is here. Their imaginary friend roars and the whole cafeteria shakes. Oh, man. Okay, you have some smarts. You're probably going to figure this out pretty quickly. Why do we have a beast under our table? Why don't you take a guess? He's asking you to guess because we totally forgot our plan. Scott! No, we didn't. Shut up. We're going to teach it piano or maybe saxophone. I lost my loans. No worry. No notes needed. You know exactly what they should do with this wild beast. Yes, I do. Be the new school mascot. Go team. Or you obviously brought the beast to the kitchen to turn it into the next Monster Chef champion so you can split the cash prize. About that money. You're about that money? Money. Money, money, money. What a kick ass idea, my god. Which was obviously ours. You're right, that was our idea. Hooray, we're geniuses. We have just what we need training montage music. Suddenly, you start a training montage in which the three of you try to teach cooking to the wild beast. You suck at it, since you're not big chefs. And also, because it's a wild beast, it keeps devouring people and wreaking havoc, but it's quite an epic training montage. Afterwards, you're sitting excited in front of a portable TV. The Monster Chef show is about to start. You're holding cute supportive signs, and you got yourself a custom-made t-shirt of the Wild Beast. Whoa, this is the big day! Also, how is it that we train the Wild Beast and it's on the show, even if it's still new and the cafeteria time hasn't even ended? Shh, time works in mysterious ways when you come to training montages. Okay, I hope it wasn't a souffle challenge. We know the Wild Beast isn't good at souffles. He isn't good at anything aside from devouring people and wreaking havoc. You quietly watch the show. The challenge is Beef Wellington. Fuck yeah, no souffle! <laughs> Not so surprisingly, once the challenge begins, the wild beast starts to devour the other contestants who dest and destroys the show set. You see the judges screaming, Who the fuck let a wild beast enter the competition? The wild beast is disqualified. Oh, no. Well, I guess that's it. We might not have won the cash prize, but we won the most valuable of prizes. The prize of laughing at a wild beast, fucking up everything on the Monster Chef Shet, which is a memory we will cherish forever. Is Damien really to ready to cherish memories that include you? Wow, we! Oh my. Oh, oh my. Something bad. Okay, um... The Holocaust. 
Uh, capitalism. How interesting it would be in the selected theme was a key component of a supervillain's plan in a movie. Uh, I mean, capitalism or the or the Holocaust. I mean, ooh, I don't know. I mean, capitalism is like a pretty fucking boring one, and the Holocaust is a little bit more exciting, but also cliche. I don't know. Do we want cliche or boring? I think capitalism will probably be boring. It's like, how am I gonna stop the superhero? I'm gonna buy all the super suits in Metropolis versus I'm gonna kill their family. All right. I think yours would probably be a little bit more interesting. Yeah. So, there you go. Holocaust or consumer capitalism. All right, week two. Let's go. Yes. All right. Do it, Vicky. Where are you gonna go? You have... Um... Creativity is the only thing that you really need. So, the auditorium? Stop playing for me. I'm sorry, I'm just giving you friendly advice from the guy that's losing horribly. Um, sure. Auditorium. Auditorium? Alright. That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves decided to give you figurative oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It'll be remembered for generation, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain true creativity. Very nice. You've gotten your own business when Damien comes rushing through, punching everyone who's minding their own business. Fuck, I'm angry! I'm angry I want to pull my own skull out and eat it. Okay. I'm so angry I want to set the school on fire and then punch the fire in its fucking face. I want to spend years accumulating political capital so I can become president and use my nuclear codes to blow up the sun. And you! You're standing in oh my no. way! Move it before I punch you so hard you'll remember which melancholy, with melancholy the times when you couldn't move without your bones hurting. Oh no, violence. Think fast. Joke's on you, I'm a pragmatist. I avoid any kind of idealization of the past because that is no use and therefore refuse feeling of any kind of melancholy. Or no time to think of anything clever. Start dancing. Oh, man. It chokes on you, I'm a pragmatist. Smack. I, I would dance, personally. But I cannot speak for you. But he was in love with me. He was, but he's having a bad day. That's so which, good. which which one would which one would please him more? This would start like this isn't good no, it's in a not. relationship. No, it's not. But the relationship hasn't started yet. So which one do you I'll think? I'll probably dance. Probably dance. Okay, let's dance. You have no idea what to do, so you start doing a silly dance. It's really, really silly. Before you realize it, all your classmates have joined you in your silly little dance. What the fuck? Move or I will kill you dead, noob. But Damien, you can't deny she's actually moving. Yeah, and quite the move she has. Humph. <laughs> Clearly even Damien can't fight this logic. Maybe you should move, Damien. Don't be a loser. Yeah. Here you move or you die. All your classmates start chanting, Move or die. Move or die. <laughs> ah! Damien, frustrated by the crazy mindful but joyful mob you created, finally leaves. Still from afar, you can see an internal fly burning in the back of his eyes. But for now, you gain two boldness and one fun. Sure. You nice. didn't like that. Well, I mean, you you got stats, so. But he didn't dislike it. No, we didn't either. dislike it. All right, uh, fun or charm is what I need. Where is charm? Where is charm? Charm is uh, the gym, right? Charm is the gym. Yeah, you, you don't necessarily need to like balance your stats. I know, but I I want to. I like balance. Epic dodgeball match. Many people fall during the battle. You can't take any more, so you valiantly go straight to the other team's leader and start negotiations for a truce. After hours of diplomacy, you commit to an agreement with an unexpected twist. Ten righteousness. So, this game is so wrong in so many ways, you could be lucky if you could do anything with that. Two charm. Nice. Hey, hey, Brian, darling. It's me. Lovely fan favorite, Polly. You know, I wasn't always a ghost. This is about to get real. Hear me out. I used to be alive, but I died with unfinished business. Now I gotta live forever like this oh, until I finish it. I know what this is. You might ask, what's your unfinished business, fan favorite, lovely Polly? I guess I can tell you. I never did a reverse Romanian Wilkinson. You know, sexually. Ugh. Don't get me wrong, I love being immortal and walking through walls and shit. But my soul never truly rests until I do that freaky sex move. Oh well. I've done that once loads of time. Name time and place will do it. Though it's not bomb and escape or leave a replica of yourself, that should buy you time to figure out what it is. I know what it is, it was a, there was the mask for it. Yeah. I didn't buy it because I didn't have enough money. Uh, do I dare try? Uh, risk it to get the biscuits. Let's let's do the thing. What? Okay, what? That's not how it works. You don't reverse over my Romanian Wilkinson. Oh, you're trying to swallow more than you can chew. I mean, I have a feeling you don't even know what a standard Romanian Wilkinson is. Am I right? You can't teach an old dog a new Romanian Wilkinson. 
Because why are you trying to have complicated kinky sex with a dog? <laughs> You're such an anti-perv that it's almost cute, but cute in an unappealing way. Like a puppy, which I stated is something I have no interest in sexually. If you excuse me, I have to go wander the earth and eternal flesh in his torment until I find someone who knows actually knows about sex. No, he wanted to play cool and do the weird sex thing, but it seems you suck at lying. I got that. I don't die. Dang, Nabbit. Me. Yay. Oh, goody. Do goody. I help you out or not? Please help me. You were having a quiet evening with a coconut and totally not human flesh flavored smoothie when Polly phases in. Yo, you planning on coming to my death day party? Yes. It's gonna be lit. It's gonna have all kinds of reminders of the way I died. Guillotines, quicksand, and alligators. And all the food will be poisoned. Wait, what? How did this girl die again? You know, I've been thinking, and I'm really into the idea of sharing my afterlife with a fellow ghost, you know? Think of the cute ghost dates we can go on. Going to haunted houses on Halloween and actually haunting them. Walking through walls to get where we want to go. Appearing in turns to reveal perspective and truth to greedy owned misers who don't appreciate the holidays. All that classic ghost stuff. But I wouldn't hate Dane Brian. Oh, she likes me! Maybe. Maybe. So maybe my question is, when do you when do, when do you think his death day party will be? Like, when will he become a ghost soonish? I'm not super patient, but I do think he parties down, and I could party even further down as a ghost. That Isn't reckless he bastard. He's a zombie, eats... which means he's already dead. True. That reckless bastard eats gluten. Gluten. He'll be dead by noon, or he's gonna be around a long time. He already has a place reserved in the retirement community, and has taken up bingo, and an ex he's been an expert knitter. Game over. I mean, game not over. Not for a long time. He's gonna die an old, old monster. Do you want to help me or screw me? That is the question. Keep in mind, I was not a dick to you. Okay. Okay? It's gonna be random. Oh, it's gonna be random? Fucking hell. Alright. No, no, no. Oh? Pick any number. Uh, between... Any number. 42. Alright, the top one. Oh, yay! Okay. Alright. Gluten? <gasps> I knew Brian lived life on the wild side, which will hopefully take him to an early grave. Hopefully. The grave, night next to mine, and we can party for eternity and make random eee noises on sound recordings. Like this. Eee! If you decide to die anytime soon, you're welcome to come to our ghost raves. They're gonna be ghastly. Well, you're not really sure how Brian's gonna feel about excited you are about his impending death, but hopefully he'll be psyched that it's a death approved and eagerly awaited by Polly. How awkward is it gonna be if Brian is actually loving Scott, and now you've psyched out as dying for nothing but a sociopath? Are you secretly in love with Scott? No, I don't think so. No. Let's trade places. Okay. Choose an animal. Uh, hedgehog. A lynx. A lynx. How stupid it would be for a superhero to use a selected animal as their symbol. Like something man. Lynx man or hedgehog man. Ooh. Well, hedgehogs would be more stupid. I think a hedgehog would be more stupid. Hey, look at me. I can cuddle you? Question mark? All right. I go first. We can wait the morning. It might be a good time to actually pause because we've been going for a while. Okay. So I think we're going to split this game into two parts and the next one's going to be coming out soon. But until it comes out, thank you for watching this. This is a fun game. I like this a lot. This was a good idea to play it. In the next episode, we're probably going to go to prom or at least we're Vicky's going gonna to go to prom. We're going to ask our dates you're out to prom. Oh goodness. And you're going to you're going to win and I'm going to lose. Well, we could both win. We could both win, but more likely you're going to win and I'm going to lose because I'm a lonely <laughs> zombie fuck. Ugh. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will see you guys in the next episode when we finish this. But until then, this has been William from Starford Studios along with my good friend Abigail. Bye. Goodbye. We will see you all soon. Take care.